Welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 140. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. I am back right when we are not interviewing anybody. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, man. I'm sorry about that. Hey, when life gets in the way, you better get used to it. It doesn't matter anyway. I have yet to listen to the interviews that you guys did the past few weeks, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be really good. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's cool. I wasn't there anyway, so I'm pretty sure they are going to be really, really, really good. So uh, Trust me, if you were there, it will be much better. I am only good when I am not there. That's when I am at my best, when I am absent. Shush, you're good. <laughs> no. Ah, uh, not good. People hate me. No, they don't. But anywho, joining us is Rom. Hello, all you happy people. Hey, Rom, how are you doing, man? Slowly but surely. Surely but slowly. Okay, can't complain, cool. but can't. Don't have anything to cheer about. Uh, it's on the level. All right, all right, all right. So, I heard that you found a new website. Yes. And we don't talk about that, because <laughs> right now we're busy with something else. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. So anyway, this week we don't have a guest because, well, everyone's tired and we want to relax and whatnot, right? So let's move on to the next topic then. And next topic is housekeeping. And, well, housekeeping, the MBS show would like to congratulate Andrew Mendo Pony Stein and Sabrina Wildfire Albergetti on their recent engagement. We wish you the very best and hope you have a long and happy life together. Congratulations, them. Yay! So, who saw this coming? Did you, James? I did. Oh, so did you, Rom? Uh, not really, because I'm not that familiar with them. Ah, alright. But nonetheless, I am happy. Yay! So, James, how did you saw it? <laughs> uh, the little that I saw of uh, Sipsy and Mando... Um, like through convention videos, mm -hmm. uh, other collaborations with like Bronies React and everything, they look like they really love each other very much. Oh, and this was... And they look like they do care for each other a lot. And that, to me, it was like, of course, it's like I all, I see both uh, outcomes. Either it happens or it doesn't happen. Mm. So, but I, I was prepared for uh, this to happen. I, I, yeah, I was. I was like, oh. They break up. That's so sad. Or hey, they're engaged. That's wonderful. I am so happy that they got engaged. It's mm -hmm. it's fantastic. So, so yeah, I, I really I really got happy. Even if I even though I don't know them personally, personally mm. I was like I was like clapping like a little girl going like. <laughs> <"Yee!"> <laughs> okay. I got happy for them. They had their their uh, fairy tale ending starting right there. It's mm -hmm. like that is the start of a happy ending. Mm, true, so true. I hope it 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 does keep going. That would yeah. be wonderful. I'm happy for them. Like they, <laughs> the the way they met, from what I can remember, is that Mendo sang a song, and they met up, they talk, and then like, <laughs> uh, Mendo going to Canada just to hang out with Sipzi, and then vice versa. It was so cool. Uh, and I'm jelly. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> let's move on to the next topic. Rom, it's your time. Oh, that's that quickly. Okay. Well, there's no guess. So yeah. All right, I am Romeo Alden, now is the MBS show news time. In today's news time, first Hasbro sets its eyes on DreamWorks, then changes their mind. Hasbro, the world's largest toy company, has shown an interest in buying DreamWorks animation. But with the sudden decline in stock and the high asking price for DreamWorks animation proposed by CEO Jeffrey Katzenberg, Katzenberg, hope I got mm -hmm. that right, Hasbro has, end, ca thank you. Hasbro has ended the deal. Link can be found in the show notes below. They wanted DreamWorks. Yeah. James, what do you know about this? Because uh, yesterday you were streaming and you said a few things. Well, I know that uh, DreamWorks has been losing money ever since they released Kung Fu Panda 2 all the way back in 2011. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know why they are losing that much money. But when you release a movie and it loses to soft part sequels like... Uh, the Hanover 2 because Kung Fu Panda 2 lost to the Hanover 2 you must be doing something wrong with the strategy that you're following it's no, it's nothing wrong with the movie itself or the writing or the characters but with how you're promoting it and how you are releasing it hmm. and th there is something wrong with what DreamWorks is doing hmm. uh, it's it, it's so bad that DreamWorks had actually to ally with 20th Century Fox 
and, and that's why before going to watch any DreamWorks movie now you have the 20th Century Fox logo before it starts uh, because they are working with them they are not independent anymore oh. uh, they cannot depend on DreamWorks themselves even DreamWorks got rid of DreamWorks Animation Studio. What? I thought DreamWorks Animation was still uh, there, no? No, 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 not at all. I can t- I'm pretty, uh, uh, people can correct me if I am wrong, but from what I know, DreamWorks Animation is not related with DreamWorks uh, anymore. Oh. And it's not so much Hasbro interested in buying DreamWorks, is DreamWorks trying to work with other companies. And Hasbro is doing really well right now. Mm. But it got it got so bad that ro- just talking about uh, Hasbro buying DreamWorks, it made Hasbro's uh, stock in the in the stock market plummet. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the other thing. Like, yeah, just mentioning about a few things, and I left this one out because speculators were saying that uh, if the venture went through, this was really bad because it's how Hasbro is partnering up with Disney to do their toys and whatnot, and if Hasbro does get the deal. It's like competitor for both sides. Hasbro is in the middle and they're playing both sides of the fence. It's better not to play for both sides. That never turns out well in the long run. Just look at Matahari. (laughs) But I think this is probably the best decision they could have made. This is good. This is going to be good in the long run. And I am very happy that DreamWorks... No, I'm very happy that Hasbro didn't go through uh, with the talks with DreamWorks about this. Mm, that's true. I mean, it could have been a bad idea. It's funny how so many other things could have caused uh, Hasbro to lose points in the stock market. Like, it's not the brownies, it's not any of these. No, the one thing that makes Hasbro lose points in the stock market is talking with DreamWorks about well, a possible merge. Well, it's hilarious. <laughs> well, technically, it's in terms of business, it's a feasible thing because you're putting a huge gamble on DreamWorks. Like you said, James, DreamWorks is losing money. And if they do invest in DreamWorks, who knows? They might not regain what they want. But eh, Dream, DreamWorks is not that bad. Like, they did How to Train Your Dragon, so that's good. Yeah, they did How to Train Your Dragon, How to Train Your Dragon 2. This year, they released uh, two movies, um, How to Train Your Dragon 2 and The Adventures of Peabody and Sherman. Mm-hmm. And both movies did, from what I heard, they did fairly well in the box office, but mm-hmm. they didn't do all that well when it comes to reviews. Oh, yeah, I mean... Which, in this day and age, where people want to spend their money very carefully, they are going to look into the reviews of movies with a magnifying glass. Yeah. To see if this movie is worth spending my money on or not. When a movie ticket is eighty dollars with fifty cents every time you go to a movie theater, mm-hmm. you usually go with the opinion of a critic that you trust. Mm-hmm. And if the opinion of the critic is not positive, you wouldn't spend your money. Let me put the, to put it to you in perspective. I went to watch Interstellar mm-hmm. before any of the big critics that I follow uh, talked about it, and uh, went to watch the movie. I didn't know what to make of it, mm-hmm. but then Doug Walker re- released his review of the movie, and he was very, very 50-50 on it, pretty much like I was. Mm-hmm. And the feeling that I had after watching the review was, if I had watched the review before going to watch the movie, I couldn't have gone watch the movie. Uh, so it's so one of those situations. That's the problem. DreamWorks is not getting good reviews in their films, mm-hmm. uh, or is not having dedicated fan bases that can uh, support uh, their product. I don't know how big the fandom of How to Train Your Dragon is, but I can tell you it's not as big as Pokemon, Uh. and it might not be as big as the Brony fandom. And within the Brony fandom, I include the people that were fan of My Little Pony back in 1987, Mm -hmm. uh, the little girls that are fans of the show nowadays, uh, those who were even following during the Generation 2 and Generation 3 days, Mm-hmm. Like, all of those people combine. I'm pretty sure they are not as big as the How to Train Your Dragon fandom. A fandom that started on the same year as the Brony fandom, by the way. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, um, putting that aside, DreamWorks does do good work and whatnot, but sometimes it's a gamble on certain things, formulas change and whatnot. And I, I don't want to say it's a good thing that Hasbro didn't get the deal or whatnot, because we got no idea what they plan for? I'm pretty sure that if Hasbro was going to join up with DreamWorks, 
uh, they would have DreamWorks Animation do another CGI animated TV series. Not a, not not a, not an animated CGI movie. They would hire them to work on an ex-Transformers film or something mm. like that. I guarantee you, because the Ringworks are known for making an, a, a CGI animated shows as well. Mm-hmm. Look at Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesome or Father of the Pride. Mm-hmm. Those are animated CGI shows that DreamWorks work on. They did a very good job with them. True. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, also, I'm also thinking this, because as for now, Hasbro has AllSpark Productions, which is a movie-based company for mostly Hasbro-related works. They do everything related to movies, TV shows, and probably video games. So they have that. So getting DreamWorks is... Uh, I don't know, maybe for it's their a, Transformers line? Yeah. It's a gamble. It's similar to... I Well, if they go for the Transformers line, like I said, and I think that will make a lot of sense. But it's not like when Disney decided to buy Pixar. Uh, mm. And that turned out to be a good decision because after Disney bought Pixar, they have been making wonderful movie after wonderful movie. I mean... If it wasn't for that decision, we wouldn't have movies like Tangled, Frozen, Wreck It Ralph. Uh, hell, Wreck It Ralph wouldn't even exist. It would Wait, still be was a development Wreck-It hell. Rolf? Was Wreck It Ralph a Pixar work? I thought it was no, Disney. No, no, no. It was Disney. All the three movies oh. that I said, Tangled, Frozen, and Wreck It Ralph, they are all Disney. But the thing is that after Disney bought Pixar, John Lasseter became the executive chief of creativity. Mm-hmm. So every single new movie that, were coming, that was coming out, it was going through John Lasseter's hands. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he, because John Lasseter is a genius and he knows a lot about great, uh, how to make uh, great movies, it's just weird that when he gets behind the wheel... He doesn't make such good movies <laughs> because okay. look at just look at Cars, um, not, as, not not particularly good, but it's not bad either. All but right. yeah, I mean, after Disney bought Pixar, then Disney bought Marvel, and now they have bought Star Wars. Mm. And it's I'm pretty sure Hasbro saw this and they were like, hmm, could we, right? Hmm. Maybe we could try doing this, and it didn't turn out as well as they would have expected, mm. which. To be honest with you, it's a gamble. Disney oh, was taken. Disney was pretty much bankrupt when they bought Pixar. They didn't know how it was going to turn up, and thankfully it turned out well. Then mm-hmm. they bought Marvel and they produced the Avengers. Oh, then yeah. they brought they bought Star Wars and Lucas uh, Lucas Film and uh, Lucas Arts. And not only they might be reviving some of the old video games, including uh, Secret of Monkey Island okay. and and the Star Wars video game franchise, but mm. they are also bringing back the Star Wars movies. Mm. Not only that, but without the involvement of George, of George Lucas. <laughs> well, that, which that's... I'm pretty sure every, I'm pretty sure everybody was happy after, after he made those, uh, three prequels. Yeah. But JJ Bull is doing on this one. Yeah. But so what? I mean, he did Star Trek and he didn't do a bad job with Star Trek. Mm. Why wouldn't he be able to do something, something similar with Star Wars? I don't know. It's one of those things that, this person has this mindset on certain things. We'll just have to wait and see, I guess. But it's a mind. It's a combination of mindsets. You suddenly are like, "Oh, how does this guy, Mister Lensflare, touch my Star Wars?" <laughs> then you get near my lightsabers, you piece of. <laughs> That's not a word. But, but yeah, but it's it it, it 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 it. Okay, we are digressing yeah, from yeah, the yeah. topic. But still, but it's interesting. Good thing that uh, Hasbro didn't buy uh, DreamWorks. They backed. They they backed off, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but now I'm wondering about this, the 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 future of DreamWorks. Where are they going to go now? Well, for now, I think DreamWorks is perfectly fine in their current position. It's just that they need to do a bit of more work to gain the trust of the people. And like you said, they're with Fox, so that's good, give or take. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see. DreamWorks is never gonna go away unless something terrible happens. Well, you don't know that. You don't yeah, know that yet. Yeah. You don't know that yet. You don't know that yet. <laughs> like I said, unless something terrible happens. But yeah. Better better production companies went bankrupt. The guys who did Terminator and Terminator 2, they went bankrupt because of Cutthroat Island. So you don't uh, you don't know yet, dude. You don't know yet. True, true. But anyway, uh, that's, that's our opinion on set news. And Rom, what do you think? Sorry we overshadowed you, man. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. I had no idea about movies or the industry, so I'm just taking notes here. <laughs> yeah, I told yeah. you, I am the I am better when I am absent. 
No, man. <laughs> you feel space. At least, the show is, at least the show is now more educational. We now yeah. know more about the industry and what's going <laughs> down. Well, from my perspective, which can be wrong, you, it's always better to have someone who is more, more uh, smarter than I am. Uh, at least true. we got some information to work with. Well, <laughs> technically, you're the smartest one here. <laughs> true, true. Uh, but anywho, uh, let's move on to the next one. In next news, rumors address about Ted Anderson's situation by the IDW editor. A lot of rumors about Ted Anderson have been floating around about its, his supposed involvement with an anti-brony artists. The inclusion of an OC of unknown anti-brony personality in the comics, as well as rumors of his supposed termination from IDW. After hearing about the situation, we have ran an article about Mr. Anderson probably being let go from IDW, and we were waiting on confirmation from IDW about the whole situation. After all this time, the issue has been addressed by IDW editor Bobby Kernow, who after an investigation did not believe that Anderson should be fired and stated his reasoning on the IDW board while also mentioning that the stern warning about including OCs was sent to all creative teams. You can find this post in questions here. Thanks to Jess G. Smith for sending it in. Links can be found in the show notes below. So anyway, the news was done by Cal Payne of EQD. And thank you there. So, yeah, uh, a while back we also reported on this about Ted Anderson might be fired for his work on the annual and in insertion of all those OCs and whatnot. But it seems that he was given a stern warning. A good thing he's not getting fired and whatnot, and his writing's not that bad. James, what do you think? Well, I didn't want to touch upon the Ted Anderson um, uh, drama, which Mm -hmm. has been going on for far too long than it should have, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't remember we touching upon it on the show, haven't we? Technically we did, but you were not with us during when we reported the news. Yeah, and every time that we have been reviewing the the comics, if you Mm -hmm. have been following those... uh, reviews as well on our cha- on our, on the NBA show channel. You might have noticed that I haven't even mentioned it and we haven't even touched upon it. But now mm-hmm. that we are uh, we're going to talk about this, mm-hmm. now now that the year has been cleared and now that we have a finite official conclusion about this whole uh, let's put it kindly cluster. That's not a word. <laughs> that's not because a word. that's exactly that's exactly what it was. Mm-hmm. Uh now I can I can talk about what what I think about it. Uh from the moment on that this whole thing started, mm-hmm. I I knew that this was going to uh, this wasn't going to end with Ted Anderson being fired uh, for for one reason or another. There was not enough. That's not enough for someone to get kicked out of a company, especially after producing such good writing, such good works. It's not enough and. They are not going to lose a liability that, let's be honest, has a lot more support than it has detractors. This uh, this whole situation was blown out of proportion. I mean, uh, the whole, oh, he added a f- no C from a blog that is so anti-brony. That means he is anti-brony. Well, no, not really. Because if I am doing a movie slate update and I am reviewing a Goody Allen movie... Nobody's going to come at me and say, oh, this guy is reviewing a movie from a well-known pe- pedophile and, uh, and a pervert. He is the same thing. Of course, you're not going to do that because you are not judging the person doing it. You are judging the art. Something similar to what Ted Anderson was doing there. He was making a shout-out to the artwork. He mm. wasn't making a shout-out to the person Mm, true, true. And Just because he's showing an OC, that doesn't mean he has to share those opinions. I'm pretty sure that Ted Anderson is not anti-Brony. I'm pretty sure that Ted Anderson is not pro whatever this person is doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Despite despite uh, the photos and all that, I am pretty sure that the guy didn't intend to do that. Mm-hmm. I am actually very happy that he's not getting kicked out of IDW because his comics are some of the best comics in the uh, in the whole collection. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the 2014 annual, uh, the, the Power Ponies comic, that one is great. I cannot wait to get to that one. And not only that, but the uh, Manhattan Mystery Diamond oh, thingy. Yeah, the one that we recently did. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, that one is great as well. And the one that just got released this week, the week oh, of this podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. the one, the, the Friends Forever with Speedfire and Rainbow Dash, that yeah. one is brilliant. Ooh, and it yeah. hits very close to home for me. Same so here, man. It is, it, is, it, is, it is good to see that he is not getting kicked out. But boy, am I... I am not interested at all in what the people are re- how the people are reacting to this because oh, yeah. uh, to say that it's going to be a poor reaction, it's going to put it lightly. Oh yeah, I mean people here, are going to be, people. Are, I'm pretty sure people are going to be really mad. Oh man. yeah, I mean, but here's the thing: like, even Bobby said that he reviewed everything. Like he reviewed it with a fine comb, saying that given the evidence that was given, he thought that it was a miscommunication between him and the audience or the people who was reading to his reply maybe they felt too deep or maybe they had a personal reaction to it and they went um, ballistic so it could ballistic be that is the perfect word for it actually oh, yeah. but it's also another thing like Bobby Colonel the guy who is the editor-in-chief for IDW knows Ted Anderson well so he knows this guy so for him to fire him just because of this one event or one situation it's kind of overboard it is definitely going way too far Mm -hmm. but you know here's the thing if vote with your wallet if you do not like ted anderson's work or you do not like ted anderson at all don't buy the comic or don't buy his work yeah but people are going to do that as well i mean this whole uh, what you just said the the vote with your wallet uh comment Mm -hmm. for a very long time there has been um and with very long time, I mean from like the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. There has been a lot of people angry, uh, irrationally angry at the MLP comics. Mm-hmm. Uh, starting with the Celestia and King Sombra story arc. <laughs> uh, and uh, people were saying, look at that, Katie Cook and Andy Price are ruining yet another comic series. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> and that was completely uncalled for. Uh, and uh, there was a bit of a movement on... Surprise, surprise, for Channel of all places mm-hmm. that had them saying, I am not, we are not going to buy the comics. We are all going to get together and not buy the comics. And it was hilarious because they were like, now compare the sales numbers of the first issue of the My Little Pony comics to the latest issue. Look at that. The latest issue has so few sales compared to the first issue. And I am here thinking, yeah. Because the latest issue has been released like a week ago, <laughs> and the first issue has been out for two years. Hmm. Well, you then... you are like you, you know conspiracy theorists that mm-hmm. see the eye of the Illuminati and all that in uh, almost in, everything in in in, uh, in like post stamps mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, it, pieces of toast and all that and they say oh this, this toaster must be done by the Illuminati I can see the eye on it it's like, that's pretty much what these people are like it's like oh I see low sales numbers we are winning the battle against these guys keep not buying the comics keep not buying the comics guys I have no idea how many comics they have planned but at least at least until 2015 we will be covered in comics so mm-hmm. don't don't be jerks about it that's, mm. That will be the that will be the the, the moral of the whole thing. It's, it's like don't be a jerk about everything, because it's so easy to get mad at something that you're very passionate about, but you're hurting other people in the process. That's true. I mean, like how James rejects whenever we say Pompeii. Oh, Norman, you don't want to go there. <laughs> well, see? Norman, you don't want to call the, you don't want to play with the ball. You will get the <laughs> horns. And I'm Spanish, so. <laughs> Careful. Yep. See the audience. That's a perfect example of. Um, someone... You don't know it. You are not going to talk about Pompeii. <laughs> that movie sucks. Yeah. I Here still we go want again. my. Mo- I still want my money back from that movie. An hour and a half of nothing. It was am- unbelievable. And yeah, I know. For an hour and a half of nothing, I very well talk a lot about it. So, <laughs> that's such a bad movie. God, God. No. Yeah. Bottom line, I am very glad that Ted Anderson didn't get fired from mm-hmm. him. That is good. That yeah, is good. I mean, uh, I, I don't want to say anything much because Ted Anderson, I got no idea how he is or his personality and whatnot. I would love to have him on the show as a guest in the future if it's possible. But the thing is, the guy does awesome work. His comics are really good. Like, James mentioned a few good ones and I'm going to add in a bit more. He did the... Pinkie Pie Micro and the CMC Micros. So, 
he does really good work. So for him to be fired just because of that one transgression, it's not fair. Perhaps the one sound, the one side effect that we had, uh, that everybody's going to suffer for this, is mm. that we are not going to see so many pony OCs appearing in the background anymore. Mm, yeah. Which doesn't mean we are not going to see more uh, pony fight famous characters appearing in the background anymore. Because mm-hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure some people might have noticed, but Heather Breckel uh, reblogged something on Tumblr <laughs> a yeah. few days ago where uh, she was showing a preview close up of one of the pages of an upcoming comic I don't oh, know which yeah. one and, and you can see in the background two pony fight characters from Kill la Kill I know so, she mentioned that on the show yeah yeah so that is that, that's cool that's still fair game so expect to see more more in the style of big Lebowski ponies but for example don't expect to see movies that appear in the next oh, uh, yeah. in the next Andy Price comic yeah, despite I, how much he liked the design <laughs> yeah I, I think the rule was this for all creative teams was you can do almost whatever you want but don't insert OCs it's yeah, almost don't put OCs in yeah there. it's almost like the show when firefly was in there oh, no sorry when wildfire yeah, was wildfire. in there wildfire. Wildfire. Yeah. so it, it's almost in that situation so if someone was to do some kind of bad pony like the batman or something like that it's okay but you just don't insert Norman Sanzo, the pony, in there, or maybe jittery Nobody lines. Nobody will want to insert that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jerk. He <laughs> will go yeah. after the cutie Marcus Crusaders, yeah. Uh, you... <laughs> no, that's... No, no. <laughs> you jerk. But, yeah. <laughs> 15 years old. Oh, <laughs> uh, you jerk. But, no. <laughs> but, but, anyway. The, the it's thing... so easy to get you riled up. <laughs> oh, jerk. No, but the thing is, Ted Anderson... He's an awesome writer. He does good writing work for the comics, and you should probably check it out. And the thing with the annual, it's not that big of an issue, guys. You were making a big deal out of something that shouldn't even have been mentioned. Mm -hmm. Something that should appear in the background. It's so easy to offend you. You, it's, It's funny because most of the people shouting and screaming about it, and surprisingly as well, they were coming from Tumblr. Uh, and you know that in that website, despite me staying away from the bad side of it, uh-huh. you don't need to do a lot in order to offend someone. <laughs> so how and many I'm pretty people... sure that comment I'm pretty sure that comment alone has offended somebody. <laughs> so how many people have you offended, James? <laughs> uh, I think I, I offended a lot of people. <laughs> uh, oh well, final thoughts is is the guy's bread and butter. We shouldn't really be messing with his job and Rom sorry to overshadow you again I still had nothing on the topic <laughs> I still haven't got to the comic books yet ah, it's cool man it's cool I've been drawing my own lately <laughs> yay but anyway uh, awesome work yay Tennyson you have a job still yay so Rom news time's done yay I've been Romeo Alves with an MBSU news time back to you Norman alright thank you thank you so, yeah, this week we have no guests, and like I said, we all want to relax. It's a Saturday, by the way. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's go to the next topic, which is shoutouts. My shoutout goes to you guys. Thank you, James. Thank you, Rom. And thank you, audience, who are listening to this. You're awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> What's you know we are. Show? I know. We're so short. I know. I was expecting something longer. <laughs> we had shorter was... episodes. Oh, my God. At least we can relax now, James. We we don't need to do much. <laughs> uh, what was the short episode? Twenty minutes was it? Uh, I think so. But anyway. yeah, I think it was just you and me back then. <laughs> yep, yep. And James, shout out. Well, I want to give a shout out to um, to you guys because you're cool, and uh, I want to give a shout out to Fermin because what a great guy he is. Um, how much work he gives me with the comic book, and yet again how. Uh, content, content. I am working on it. It's brilliant, <laughs> and uh, I want to. I want to give another shout out to uh, Beth and Sketchy because they're lovely, oh. and and Mecca because he's a cute little toaster. <laughs> and last but not least, I want to give a shout out to Wilson because he will be listening to this while he is working. I'm pretty sure of it because oh, yeah. he does download the podcast and he likes to listen to us. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Hey, Will. 
I hope you're having fun. And it's funny because we're talking to you in the future while we're doing this in the past. Time travel, eh? <laughs> Time travel. Indeed, indeed. And Rom, shout outs. Hi, Mom. Knew it. Dude, it's my... It's been... How many weeks in a row have I already done that? What's there to know? Uh, in episode 200, Rom's shout out will be to his mom again. Yep. I love my mom. She supports me no matter how crazy my ideas are. <laughs> what kind of, I have the bestest parents in the whole world. Why others are being told to get a job, my parents are okay with me sitting home and drawing for a living. Indeed, we all love your mom. <laughs> but anyway... I'll try not to take that out of this concept. <laughs> yes, do not take that out of context. All right. <laughs> Anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshow.gmail.com. And if you'd like to email us personally, links are in the show notes. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at mbshow. Sweetie, but we'll just retweet this, tell you that the show's out, and try not to be a uh, big mini pants to James. Ah! <laughs> I can't take it. It's okay. I'm not going to the girl and I'm crying my eyes. <laughs> no. Sweetie, but we'll give you a hug. But anyway, um, you can also reach me. But she hates me and she has to sister me every single week. No, no. She doesn't do that, man. She's a nice mod for the show. Well, she's strict, but she's awesome. She... But anyway, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo, I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And like always, Magic the Gathering. <laughs> That's one of my addictions. I'm sorry. <laughs> and James, if I'm not mistaken, um, Sweetie Bot just gave you a hug. Ah, beef. Beef's off. Look at the bright side, at least she's not working on pneumatics, not hydraulics. If she would give you a hug on hydraulics, that would be painful. <laughs> Anyway, James, where can they find you? Well, they can find me on uh, James Cork on Tumblr, on Twitter, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, you better not find me on Tumblr. You won't like what you say. No, you can find me on Tumblr. You can go to my uh, Ask Pony blog in uh, askmovieslate.tumblr.com. And you can also find me on DeviantArt on jamescork.deviantart.com. I am James Cork everywhere. Just look for me on, on Google. You will find me. Yep. No problem. You, you'll find all his place like Ink Bunny. <laughs> And other places like that. Uh, you have to say Ink Bunny, of course. Ink Bunny is legit. You are such a... Can we please have Kenny Logan singing right now? Danger Zone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because that's pretty much what Ink Bunny is. I thought you it know, was for Affinity. Right? No, the, for Affinity is basically just one giant radioactive <laughs> sign that says abandon of hope ye, do, ye who enter here and it's right between the uh, reactor 4 of Chernobyl and uh, that nuclear plant that was in Japan that blew up oh, after the tsunami soon. yeah that's, that's uh, yeah, oh shut up I'm talking, about for, I'm talking about 4 affinity that's what 4 affinity sits right there you don't want to be there you don't want to but anywho um, Rom you can find me at reliciousgallery.tumblr.com or in my deviant, relicious.deviantart.com. <laughs> I draw stuff. Yay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ponyvillelive.com. Links will be provided in the show notes. I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Ronnie Oh, come on. You're <laughs> stepping on my turf, you pesky kid. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I have been James Cork. <laughs> and I am Romeo Old. Thank you all so much for listening to the podcast. Check out our website for more podcasts that we've done. And as always, we will see you on the next podcast. Bye-bye. <laughs>